This video is made possible by Curiosity Stream and Nebula. Sign up with the link in the description for access to both for less than $15 a year. We've all heard the phrase, cat got your tongue, but like all idioms, it isn't exactly literal. Cats don't usually waltz into your mouth and steal your tongue. In fact, as a human, you can probably live your life without having to ever worry about any assault on your tongue except from, for example, hot coffee or a really bad kisser. But take a second and consider if a tiny cat actually did slip into your mouth and stole your tongue. And not just stole it, became it, and lived out the rest of its life as your tongue. That would suck, wouldn't it? On the off chance that you ever become a fish living in either the Gulf of California or the Gulf of Guayaquil, you might not have to imagine this. Although, it wouldn't be a cat stealing your tongue, since cats don't tend to like water very much. And the fact that if they saw you, they'd just eat all of you since you'd be a fish, and cats like to eat fish. The tongue-getting cats of the oceans aren't cats, but isopods. Cousins of crabs and lobsters. Chimothoa exigua, or the tongue-eating louse, is a parasite that targets fish. Specifically, as their name suggests, the tongue of fish. This louse starts its life as a wee little boy, only a couple of millimeters long. He has to be that small because in order to invade his host, he crawls through its gills, usually with some pals. He then attaches himself to the gills and hangs out there long enough to mature. And from there, eventually, he blossoms into a beautiful young lady. A tongue-eating louse is what's called a protandric hermaphrodite, the prefix proto meaning original, and andric from the Greek word andras, meaning man. And hermaphrodites are, of course, individuals that serve both the male and female reproductive role. So, a tongue-eating louse starts its life as a male and later can mature into a female. But this little lady has a long way to go before she lays any eggs. After dislodging herself from the gills of her host, she then migrates to its mouth. If you're anything like me, you haven't spent much time dissecting fish and aren't very familiar with fish anatomy. So you might be wondering how she makes this journey, but it's actually pretty straightforward. Let me explain. To get oxygen, fish gulp in water with their mouths the same way that we breathe air through our nose or mouths. Then they pump the water over their gills to absorb the oxygen. Then they shove out the deoxygenated water with a flap from their gills. The slotted parts of fish gills are what let water out of the mouth and what let tongue-eating lice in. When our lovely louse gets to her host's mouth, she takes a look at the tongue and she thinks, hey, that's pretty cool, but wouldn't that be way cooler if it was me? So, she usurps the tongue. She uses her incredibly powerful hind legs to grip onto the base of the tongue. Thick thighs may save lives, but they wreak havoc upon fish tongues. The parasite then pierces into the tongue to get at its blood, and then she slurps the blood up. To keep the flow going, she injects an anticoagulant into the wound. Anticoagulants are chemical compounds like the active ingredient in aspirin that reduce the ability of blood to clot. Another anticoagulant is called heparin, and it's found in mosquito saliva and, presumably, vampire saliva. It's part of what makes mosquito bites itch so badly. So I can only assume then that this tongue eating is a very itchy and uncomfortable process for the poor fish. Soon enough, without any blood, the tongue atrophies. It ultimately withers away and falls off, but the louse doesn't leave. Despite being called a tongue-eating louse, it eats more than just the tongue. It also feeds off of the fish's mucus and stray bits of food while the fish eats. And remarkably, the fish can still feed just fine. The louse just acts like a prosthetic tongue. That would be very charitable of the louse if it wasn't her fault in the first place that the fish had lost its tongue. It would be like if someone pulled out all of your teeth and then offered to chew up all of your food for you and then spit it into your mouth for you like a mama bird. Anyway, the louse stays attached to the nub of the tongue so the fish can still move the nub and thereby the louse to aid in eating. And the louse lives out the rest of her life here, essentially as a tongue. And yes, that includes her reproductive years. Remember how I mentioned that it's usually a group of young lice who invade a fish's gills? Well, some of them stay there, and they eventually pay their old friend a visit in their host's mouth, and there they give the lady louse some love. This would be like if someone broke into your home, ate your couch, then became your couch, and then invited their whole harem over to bang there right in your living room, right in front of the pictures of your grandmother. Remarkably, the host of this unwanted party makes it out pretty much just fine. You know, besides for its tongue being replaced by a horrifying creature. In fact, many fish end up even outliving their parasitic tongue. 
Although, once their tongue parasite dies, they too will die shortly thereafter due to starvation, because they don't have a tongue and it's difficult to eat. But how do the fish really feel about this? We brought on one fish whose tongue had been eaten by a louse. Marty, how did this affect your life? Well, Biork, I'm glad you asked. After the tongue louse ate my tongue, my wife left me. Wow, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, there is a silver lining to everything, though. After my wife left me, I signed up for the Curiosity Stream and Nebula Bundle deal. Tell me more. Well, I used to stay up all night thinking about how my wife left me and how now another fish was making her happy in ways that I couldn't possibly without a tongue. But now that I signed up for Curiosity Stream and Nebula for less than $15 a year, I got access to thousands of nonfiction and documentary titles. I can spend my time learning about this beautiful world we're in instead of thinking about my wife. I mean, my ex-wife. There's an entire section on Curiosity Stream devoted to nature documentaries. I particularly like the Ocean Mystery series. I'm hoping an episode will come out that explains the mystery of why my wife doesn't love me anymore. I actually wooed my second wife by telling her fascinating stories I learned from watching the exclusive videos on Nebula. Babe, tell me again about the logistics of D-Day, or maybe about some of the modern conflicts taking place in this world. Thanks Real Engineering and Real Life Lore for making these exclusive series on Nebula and all the Biork videos that come out early and ad-free. I couldn't have gotten married again without it. Sign up today for less than $15 a year using the link down in the description below or by clicking the button that's on your screen right now. So, Marty, how exactly do you talk without a tongue? I don't know! Anyway, thanks for sticking through to the end. I want to assure you that you, as a human, don't really have to worry about tongue-eating lice. They don't target us. At least, not the way that they target fish. They're technically even edible. Or at least, not specifically inedible. A supermarket got sued when, understandably, horrified customers found lice in fish that they'd gotten from the store. But, since they don't target humans, the judge just shrugged and dismissed the case. Indeed, the worst a tongue-eating louse might do to you is nip your finger if you stick it into her host's mouth. But, let's be real, you probably deserve your finger getting bitten if you're sticking it in some animal's mouth anyway. Thanks for watching.